city and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Twenty-five years in the Army, and I still like retreat. Well, it's about the best time in a soldier's day, Major. You're right, Matt. For me, too. You have time to eat with us? I'd sure like to, but i got to get back to town. Sorry you can't stay. Orderly. Sir? You bring out Marshal Dillon's horse. Yes, sir. Oh, thanks for bringing those papers out, Matt. That was a pleasure. Oh, incidentally, there was something else I wanted to talk to you about. Oh? A, uh... A robbery, as a matter of fact. A robbery? Yeah, it's a little embarrassing for the Army to have to report this, but, uh, well, our paymaster was held up. Oh. Well, I guess all holdups are embarrassing for somebody. So one of the men was a member of the payroll guard, stationed right here at Fort Dodge. And he got away with the money? Uh, it was well planned and well executed. The accomplice started firing from the rocks, and in the confusion, the soldier merely turned and ran with the money. Well, as you say, that is a little embarrassing. Matt, they rode off in separate directions, obviously planning to meet later and split the money. We have patrols out now looking for them. We think the soldier was wounded. Uh-huh. Uh, what do you want from me, Major? Well, I just thought that you might keep an eye out. It's not likely after two days that either one of them is still around, but... Well, if you were to hear anything, I'd appreciate knowing. I uh, sure let you know. Marshal Force, sir. Oh, thank you. Well, Major, I'll see you later. Give my regards to Miss Russell and Chester. Sure will. Thanks, Sam. Two beers on the house. Well, thanks, Kitty. Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am, I sure do thank you, Miss Kitty. Well, wait a Now, I'll hold that chair oh. for you. No need to help me like this, Chester. I'm not an old lady, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that, Miss Kitty. It's just that I try to be gentlemanly like. Oh, I know. <laughs> and I appreciate it. I wonder where Doc is. I don't know. Hey, you promised him a free beer, too, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Well, it's not like him to miss out on that. <laughs> it sure ain't. <laughs> well, Doc's not one to neglect a patient for a beer, Chester. Oh, well, now, I Miss mean, Kitty, I didn't mean now, that. It seems exactly to me right. she's mighty quick to defend Doc, isn't she, Chester? Hey, uh, uh, who's defending me now? Uh, from what? I am, Doc, from your friends. <laughs> well, friends are the most dangerous of all. Yeah. <laughs> Sit down, Doc. Well, I shouldn't, but uh, i got to get back to my office now. But I just wanted to see Matt a minute. Well, you've got time for a beer, anyway. What's on your mind, Doc? Well, uh, something kind of funny happened, Matt, and 
I think you ought to know about it. All right. Well, sir, a couple of hours ago, a young fella dragged himself up to my office. He'd been shot in the leg. I took the bullet out for him, and it hurt him pretty bad. Oh, he lost a lot of blood. So I told him to lie down in the back room for a while and warned him to take it easy for a few days, not to do anything to start the bleeding up again. Well, what happened? Well, I left the office for a few minutes, Matt. I, I was expecting some quinine to come in on the stage, you see, and I went down to pick it up. Well, when I got back to the office, he'd gone. He ran off without paying you, Doc. Well, that's not the important fact. I thought that you should know about this, Matt, because this man was wearing army pants and boots. What? Now, I wouldn't have thought too much about it if he hadn't run out that way. Oh, you think he might be a deserter, Doc? You wouldn't have any idea which way he went, would you, Doc? Well, now, that's another funny thing, Matt. Moss Grimmett. He came in a little bit after I got back to the office. Yeah. Yes. Oh, Moss, the poor fellow. He had the most terrible toothache. It was, well, I didn't need to roll it. Dark. It was just... well, what did he say? Well, he said some fellow with a bad leg came into the delivery stable and paid him for the hire of a horse and rode off right out of town. Which way, Doc? Well, Moss watched him because he seemed so unsteady in the saddle. Which way, Doc? Yeah, well, Moss said he rode west, right on up Front Street. Just a... Yes, sir. Go get the horses. I'll meet you in front of the office. Yes, sir. Matt, you think he is a deserter? I got an idea that's not all he is, Doc. Look like we're going to come across nothing out this way, Mr. Dillon. The wind last night blowed everything awful bare. Yeah. Well, we'll ride on a little farther just to make sure. I agree. You'd think a fellow in the Army would have more sense than to hold up the paymaster now, wouldn't you? Now you figure that's worse than holding up a bank, Chester? Well, sure it is. You can work it out for yourself. This way, every single trooper in the cavalry will be out to get him, taking their pay that way. <laughs> Maybe you're right. Of course I'm right. They know two ways about it. Now, if it was me running the thing Just a like minute, Chester. You see something? I'm not sure. Over there on the ground. Oh, it's a canteen. Yeah. Want me to come with you? No, Chester, you stay on your horse. Find anything? Now, there are some tracks leading to that stream bed. Here, here's the canteen. That's right over there, huh? You know him? Yeah. It's an army canteen. Yeah, I know it. Looks like our men came through here. All right, Chester, we'll stop here. Yes, sir. Here, look at these marks. Looks like he fell off his horse. Yes, he did. And drug himself along here. Yeah. Well, he shouldn't be far. What you doing? Yeah, I hear it. Turn him over. Take it easy. So he looks awful bad. Yeah. And he's in no shape to travel. He ought to have shelter, too. Mr. Dillon, there's a shack up there yonder where the creek men see. Oh, yeah. Oh, we take him there. Go get the horses. I'll carry him out of these bushes. Right, sir. Oh, you don't need no help? No, it's all right. I got it. Don't move, mister. What? What? You ain't carrying my boy off. Lurie needs tending. His ma and me will do the tending. Now, why'd you shoot him? 
Why did I shoot? Stay back there. Put that one on. No, Chester. What's the matter, Mr. Wait. Why are you shot him? Why are you stand still? You crazy fool. Chester! Chester! I'm, I'm sorry about that, mister. But you hark now. You don't do what I say, I'll shoot you too. You're making a big mistake, mister. I didn't shoot your boy. He's wanted by the army for a robbery and desertion. Don't move. Who are you, mister? I'm a U.S. Marshal out of Dodge City. Well, I tell you, Marshal, we Mortons have got respect for the law. But you ain't taking Lurie. Maybe you didn't shoot Lurie, but you ain't taking him. I'll just take your gun. All right, now. You walk nice and slow in front of me. You walk easy with the boy. Well, what about him? Uh, him? The man you shot, you're just going to leave him there? Well, I don't like to do that, Marshal. I don't for a fact, but i got to take care of Moan first. Now, oh, start walking, Marshal. Nice and easy. I'm not going to leave him lying. Then. You ain't right. i got no choice, Marshal. Not right now. Maybe you act nice, you can come back and get him. Go on now. Carry my boy home. Keep on walking, mister. Oh, Maddie, come on out. Yes, Dad, what? Lori. What happened to Lori? He's hurt bad, Maddie. Bring him inside. Uh, here. Uh, put, put, put him down over here, mister. I... I've got to take him on, Maddie. I've got to take him where he'll be safe. This here's a U.S. Marshal. Did you shoot him? No, ma'am, I, I didn't shoot him. He was shot running from the army. And they're after him, too. They, they'll be coming sure. He'll never make it. Oh, the boy is mighty poorly, Jed. i got to get him away, man. Listen to me, Morton. You're not doing him any favor. I take care of my own, Marshal. He's, he's fevered. Awful hot. He needs time to heal, man. Time to get caught. You figure to do better than our boy than his ma and pa? Is that what you're saying? I mean, have a chance anyway. Go get the wagon. Hear, hear, hear the man out, Jed. What do you mean, a chance? A chance to get caught. A chance to heal up. A chance for a fair trial when he rides back. Ain't no fair trial in the Army. Boys that run off, they shoot them. You can't deny that now, can you, Marshal? Bet the truth, Marshal. You listen to me, ma'am. If he keeps running, they'll shoot him for sure. Got to catch him first. Now, go on, Maddie. You sure, Jed? Ain't no other way, I tell you. They ain't going to give the boy no fair trial. I'll have to follow you. You ain't following nobody. You might as well find out now. Maddie, here, take the gun. You know how to use it. You shoot him if he tries anything. All right. What about my friend lying out there? What's he talking about, Jed? I, I shot the fellow he was traveling with. You kill him? I don't rightly know. Jed. I had to look to our boy first. All right. All right, you take him off. Get him safe. Then me and the marshal will see to his friend. Well, you got to guard him, Maddie, every minute. I'll guard him. But I ain't letting no man lay dying outside my door. You tend to the boy, Jed. I'll tend to things around here. <laughs> Chester, yeah, it's gonna be all right now. I do. I ain't. So... He's fainted. That wound needs a lot of dressing. Yeah. Now look, it, it ain't likely I can do no good for him, lest I put this gun down. No, I, I guess it isn't. A U.S. marshal give me his word, I'd take it. His word about what? His word that he wouldn't do nothing foolish. Like trying to wander off. Or shoot me with my own gun while I was tending his friend. I haven't shot many women. 
I don't expect you have. Just give me your word, Marshal, that you won't make no moves against Lori till I take up this gun again. Well, you don't give me much choice, do you? I could have seen that you was tied up. All right, Manny. It's a bargain. But just until Chester comes out of it. That'll do. Now, you go fetch me some water and set it on the stove. I'll get to work. He's outside. You need something? He ain't hurt. Not hardly. He's fetching wood. Now, let's have a look at you. Uh, mm. Well, it looks like we ain't going to lose you after all. It don't feel too good. Ain't supposed to. You was really opened up. Now, you, you just lie back there. I'd admire to see Mr. Dillon. He'll be here directly. Um, you want some coffee? Thank you. I reckon it wouldn't hurt none. <laughs> might, might even help. I'll fetch you some. Here. Now I, I, I put my arm under your head like this. That's right, Tacey. Thank you. Uh, it's about time you woke up. Well, um, don't I? You can just put the wood down by the stove. All right. Well, how you feeling, Chester? I'm all right. He's got about a day to go before he can move around much. You telling me straight, Matty? I'm telling you straight. It'll be about a day before I start holding a gun on you. What's she talking about, Mr. Never Dillon? mind, Chester. Well, I, if we're in any kind of a fix, I, I could get up no, right you, now. You just lie quiet. You ain't in no trouble yet. Somebody's coming. Yeah. This may be the trouble you were talking about, Matty. You worried, Marshal? You know him? No. No, I can't recollect. I ever seen him before. Yeah. All right, it's my turn to tell you something straight. Don't try no tricks, Marshal. This may be the man who got your boy into trouble, the one who got him hurt. How'd you know? Well, there were two of them. They split up. I figured they'd meet later. You ain't trying to fool me. It wouldn't be smart to fool me about my boy. You just let him in. You talk to him. I'll be in the back room. I could still shoot you, Marshal. Remember that. You looking for the Morton place? I'm looking for Lurie Morton. Well, you come to the right place, mister, but Lurie ain't here. He'll be here. I think I'll just come in and wait. I've come a long way. Well, one more won't matter none, I guess. Sit down. I declare, we set out in this prairie alone for months. And all at once I got me a cider company. What's your name? Joe Rawley. What's ailing him? Got himself shot. Who shot him? I don't know. We we just found him. You in the army? What are you asking that for? Well, I, I just figured with Lurie being in the army and all, he'd stand No, around. I ain't in the army. <clears throat> he sure ought to be here by now. Are you his ma? I'm his ma. Where's his pa? He ain't here. He had to ride into town. Ain't no sense, Lurie ain't here. He should have been here last night, easy. He didn't have that far to ride. 
You know a lot about Lurie, considering you ain't an army man. I know your boy real good. You was the one. What are you talking about? You was the one who made him run off, who got him hurt. He's been here. Ain't that so? Ain't you the one that got my boy into trouble? Where's he gone? His pa took him off. He's hurt bad. Did they take the money? I don't know nothing about any money. Now, you're going to save yourself a lot of trouble, lady, if you talk straight. Now, is the money here, or did they take it with them? I tell you, I don't know nothing about no money, and I don't care about no money. I told you to talk straight. You get out of here. I can't talk no straighter than that. You talk, woman, or you're going to get bad hurt. I ain't a patient man. You ain't a man at all. Where oh, is no. that money? All right, hold on there. Who... thing, Marshal. Yeah, but you saved a life. I just... I just don't know how it all come about. Well, things just happen, that's all. My Jed and I was always peace-loving folks. We was always on the side of the law. I believe that. And just look what come about. Our boy running off. Jet shooting your friend. Me killing that man. <laughs> it don't prove out, Marshal. It, it just don't prove out. But I know what I'm going to do now. What's that? I'm going to give you your gun. Yeah. Maddie, I'm going to have to go after him. I know that. You'll have to go after my man and my boy. But it's all I know to do to end this, Marshal. It's all I know. Yeah. Uh, Chester's going to need to... I'll take care of Chester, Marshal. If you think you can trust me. Yes, Maddie, I think I can trust you. Now, come on, let's go up to the house. One hundred and thirty people killed by fire at sea, the captain dead, perhaps poisoned. And the chief engineer sat helplessly moaning and wringing his hands. Was there a murderer on board? Now, read in the latest issue of Look Magazine, the mysterious and incredible story of the ill-fated vessel, the Morrow Castle. You folks who enjoy the action and suspense of gun smoke will be particularly fascinated by Look Magazine's detailed report of the death of the Morrow Castle. Did the chief radio operator deliberately touch off the fire, or was he really a hero? Were 130 people murdered and the Morrow Castle burned to hide evidence that the captain may have been poisoned? Get the chilling answers in Look. Learn in Look about the one man on the ship who was acclaimed for superhuman devotion to duty and how he was later imprisoned for the bludgeon murder of two of his neighbors. Find out in Look 
How it was discovered that there was a pathological fire setter aboard the Morrow Castle. Don't miss Fire at Sea in the new issue of Look Magazine. It's on your newsstands now. Get Look today. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Marion Clark, with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Joseph Kearns, Virginia Christine, and Vic Perrin. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week for another story on Gunsmoke. Latest news follows, then Mitch Miller with tonight's guest stars on the CBS Radio Network. WBT Charlotte. An estimated 10 million Russians are studying English.